Our home is our castle. It's where we eat, sleep and share good times. It's a place that belongs only to us and our families. Or so we think. What if in reality we are sharing our homes with other things? Or more importantly, what if they are sharing their homes with us and we are the intruders? Maybe these chilling true tales will help you decide. It's called to her. Nebraska, United States, 2011. This incident occurred two days after the 9-11 attacks, and although it has nothing to do with the attacks, it was the way that Madeline remembered the timing. She lived with her parents and her sister in the family home. Her father worked night shifts and was the only male in the house. As such, the ladies were often home alone. It was rather late at night and Madeline's mother had already gone to bed. Soon Madeline followed behind her. They'd had a very long day. Her older sister, however, was working away on the computer downstairs and was the only one awake. Madeline soon fell fast asleep. She was in a deep sleep when, suddenly, she was awoken by somebody screaming. It took a second or two for her to register that it was her mother screaming from the room next to hers. Desperately, she tried to get up out of bed to see what was wrong, but found that she couldn't move. It felt as if someone was holding her shoulders down so that she couldn't get up. Madeline could move her legs, but just could not sit up in her bed. She looked around desperately to see if someone was holding her down, but couldn't see anyone. She tried to move again, but felt as if her shoulders were pinned to the bed. She then tried to call out, but found that she couldn't make a single sound. She then looked out of her open bedroom door, and that's when she saw it. From her bed, she saw a greyish figure of a man step backwards out of her room. It turned and looked at her as it walked out. She froze when it did, as that figure had no face. She could however make out the clothing, and he also wore a hat. But the face, it was so cold, so chilling, so blank. After this creepy moment, the figure turned and walked down the hallway away from her room. Madeline was finally able to jump out of bed and run to her mother in the next room who was now sobbing loudly. Her sister, who was still downstairs playing on the computer, had headphones on and had not heard a single thing. Madeline said that the house was not at all soundproof, but her sister just hadn't heard anything. As she sat comforting her mother, who was sobbing in her bed, she asked her what had happened. Her mother explained to her that she had been deep asleep and was awoken by what she thought was the sound of someone talking in her room. She could hear a male's voice calling, Mum! Mum! over and over, as if it were trying to get her attention. This happened until she actually woke up and saw that figure in the doorway. That is when she screamed. Madeline desperately searched the house and walked down the hallway in the direction of which the grey figure had gone. She checked all the rooms, but all the doors were locked, and there was no one in the house. He just seemed to have vanished into the hallway. Was this the spirit of a 9-11 victim wanting to say goodbye to family? Or was it some other creepy incident of a spirit looking for his mother? Well Dressed South Texas, USA, 1980s. Amanda was about nine years old when this happened to her. Her mother had just remarried and then moved her and her 13-year-old sister to an old South Texas town close to Corpus Christi. Amanda was old enough at nine to be nervous about the move. After all, it was a big move. It was a new town, a new school, and they knew no one there. 
To make things worse, they had moved to a rental house that she described as old and creepy. Even at that age, she thought to herself that there was something extremely odd about the house. It was just built in the centre of an old run-down street that ran off a very busy highway. It looked out of place. The house was a grey wood-framed house, and, horrifyingly enough, it was complete with creaky wooden floors and wood panelling throughout. Amanda hated the house and said that she never felt comfortable or safe there. It was not common for her mother and stepfather to go out and leave the girls at home at night, but on one particular night, much to their dismay, they were alone in the house. Her older sister had an upstairs bedroom, which in reality was an attic that had been converted into a bedroom. Amanda recalled that her sister's bedroom was quite stuffy, and that even if it was quite cold outside, to the point of freezing temperatures, the air in the attic made her feel like she couldn't breathe. Amanda's sister was in her room listening to music, and Amanda wanted to join her and spend some time with her. She started to climb the stairs to the bedroom, and a horrible feeling overwhelmed her. She said she felt frozen when she would attempt to walk up the shabby carpeted stairs. She grabbed onto the wood rail as she steadied herself. She could hear the music trickling down the stairwell from her sister's room. Now, maybe it was the acoustics of the home, or maybe there was something more sinister, but Amanda thought she could almost make out someone speaking in the music. In a panic, she ran back down the stairs and across the large kitchen. The wooden floor slats creaked as she dashed over the lino floor, which only made her panic even more. She finally stopped running in the family bedroom hallway, which was well lit up. She had left all the lights in the house on, all except for the living room. She stood there in the hallway. She tried to calm herself in the quiet. She thought that maybe she should stay in her own room until her mother came home. And, just as she was about to walk into her room, she paused for a second. A feeling came over her. A feeling like she was being watched. A chill ran down her back as she turned around slowly to focus her eyes on the living room, which was still dark. There, standing in the living room, and in the direct path to the front door, was a man. He appeared to be Hispanic, and he was an older man with dark hair. He had an upset expression on his face, and he just stood there. He wore a neat dark grey suit, almost as if he were dressed to go to church. The man didn't move, and didn't make a sound. After a second or two, she noticed that he was looking at her, but it was as if he were confused. His eyebrows furrowed, and she wondered if he was going to do something or charge at her. But he didn't do anything. The more she looked at him in shock, she realised that he just looked upset. Was it because she was in his house? Had this been his home? Or was something else going on that she didn't quite understand? Amanda closed her eyes and kept them shut tightly for a few seconds. She hoped that she was just having an elaborate dream and would now wake up. She remembers that she felt a bit dizzy with her eyes closed and had to reach out to the wall to steady herself. She then opened her eyes again. The man was still standing there, staring at her with that same sad expression. Amanda gasped and bolted straight out of the room. She headed for her mother's room. She made sure that all the lights in the house were on as she went and jumped into her mother's bed. She covered herself under all of the blankets hoping to God that she hadn't been followed and that she wouldn't be found. When her mother and stepfather finally came home, they found her still in their bed covered completely by their blankets and with every light on in the house. Since then, Amanda has remembered the experience and reflected on it. She said that she feels bad for the man in the suit and still wonders if he felt that she was an intruder in his home. I guess we'll never know. I just wanted to thank you all for being here and supporting this project. You guys are amazing. If you like my work and want to show your support, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. 
just look for SOS Paranormal, or there is a link in the description. Thanks again guys, and now back to the stories. The Thing Upstairs New Zealand, 2010 Ivan had a friend that was in the process of moving into a new home. He had asked for Ivan's help, as well as few other friends to help in the move. Ivan and the others agreed, and the group of friends decided that they would camp out in the empty home the night before. Their plan was to get started with the majority of the move in the morning. Ivan and his friends were all bunked up in the lounge room, and soon everyone had fallen asleep. Everyone except for Ivan. He just couldn't get comfortable enough to sleep that night. Whether it was the fact that they were sleeping on the floor, or that they were in a seemingly empty house, he just didn't know. It was about 2am and he was still awake. He looked around the room and saw that everyone else was asleep. He could hear what he thought sounded like children laughing upstairs. It was quite late at night though, and his first instinct was that maybe the noises were coming from the next door neighbour's house. He guessed that maybe a window had been left open upstairs, and the sound was just travelling through. After a few minutes of hearing the laughing kids, he thought about it some more. Why exactly would kids be playing this late at night, and for so long? The children sounded quite young too. Either way, he tried to ignore it. He just wanted to get to sleep. He lay there, staring into the dim night, and that's when he saw it. It was one thing that he'd never forget. A figure made its way down the stairs. It was a transparent figure with an almost bluish glow, and it seemed to move smoothly, almost as if it was gliding down the stairs. The night was pitch black, but he could see this eerie figure as clear as day. It reached one point on the stairs and suddenly turned and looked directly at him. This strange figure had a face, but its features weren't easily distinguished and he did not recognize it as looking like anyone he knew. The figure stood near the bottom of the stairs, silent, hovering. He said that it was strange, the energy that he felt from that thing. It was cold, almost lonely. It stood staring at him, in what may have only been a few moments, but felt like forever. And then, it quietly turned around and walked back up the stairs and vanished. Being too freaked out to do anything that night, he lay awake until the morning. With a blessing of daylight, he did go upstairs to investigate. There were no open windows and nobody there. If you'd like to submit your own chilling true tale, so that your story might be featured in one of these episodes, contact me on seekersosparanormal at gmail.com. Email details are in the description. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time.